Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. The Eastern Caribbean urged to tackle the issue of untrained teachers in the classroom. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for today, Tuesday, January 10. From the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. There is a call for governments in the Eastern Caribbean to invest more in training early childhood educators. It came from the head of the Eastern Caribbean Joint Board of Teacher Education, who says such investment will reduce the number of untrained teachers in the sub-region. Marie-Claire Williams reports on the two-day meeting which opened today. In the past five years, 70% of candidates graduated from associate degree education programs. But Chairman of the Eastern Caribbean Joint Board of Teacher Education, Dr. Babalola Ogonkola, says some of the unsuccessful candidates are still teaching. Uh, that is to us a problem or a concern that we think that uh, we must rise up to, to solve the problem. So I'm saying that there should be a policy by government as to what to do with those that failed or those that refuse to enroll at all when they are in fact teaching in the schools. Dr. Ogonkola added that the highest level of enrollment was in primary education programs, while technical and vocational disciplines saw the least number of candidates. This implies that there are much more primary school teachers enrolling for associate degree in education than what we have in early childhood education or what we have in uh, technical and vocational uh, education. Therefore, there is urgent need to have more trained teachers in early childhood education, in Tibet, and other secondary education. He said students from only four out of the seven countries are currently pursuing early childhood education programs. Mary Claire Williams, CMC News, Bridgetown. The leader of the oil field workers trade union, the OWTU in Trinidad and Tobago, says the battle with the state-owned oil company Petrotrin is not over. While the two sides settled on a 5% pay increase for workers for the 2011-2014 period, averting a 90-day strike that was to begin Monday, Ansel Roger says the union still wants the company's president, Fitzroy Harewood, gone. And there is also the issue of the workers actually getting what's promised. We get more in this CNC3 report from Ovashi Tiwari Rupnarayan. 5% will be included at the next payroll cycle and reflects a 3% increase for 2011 and 2% for 2012. Retroactive payments, it was agreed, will be paid based on the productivity of Petrotrin. The parties will continue discussions for final settlement on the third year of that negotiation period. But for the union boss, it's not over. This one is an interim um, adjustment, and uh, once it's interim, it leaves the, uh, the adjustment going forward ought to be outside of 5%. The settlement is in stark contrast to the 000 offer proposed on Friday, and it's going to cost the company an estimated additional $80 million annually. But let's just say demands are not met. Will OWTU strike again? No strike would not be on the table, not in this regard. But, um, but a strike is never off the table where OWTU is concerned. One matter not settled in the talks was the tenure of company president Fitzroy Harewood, whose removal the union had been lobbying. 
city, I see there are top people in this management, including the president, who ought, to, um, who ought not to be occupied in that position simply because of our belief that he does not have the capacity to pay, take Petrochin um, forward in a time when Petrochin needs good leadership. And from the concern of one trade union in the Twin Island Republic to another, the Seamen and Waterfront Workers Trade Union are demanding that Chairman of the Angostura Holdings Limited, Dr. Ralf Balgobin, step down amid sexual harassment allegations and has been supported by the National Trade Union Center in its call. Balgobin is accused of sexually harassing a senior female executive at the company and the union believes that in the interest of transparency and accountability, he should step aside pending investigations into the allegation. The board of Angostura said Monday that the whistleblower complaint against Balgobin has not yet been investigated. The complaint, along with a polygraph to substantiate the claim, was submitted to the audit committee of Angostura for investigation in November last year. A police report of sexual harassment was also made that same month. A Grenadian attorney says government has a moral responsibility to facilitate the legalization of marijuana for medicinal purposes. And Slim Clowden, who is a member of a recently formed organization campaigning for the legalization of the herb, said it is a matter that should be urgently addressed. And he's calling first for legislation for medicinal purposes to be followed by legislation for recreational use. Beginning with cancer, diabetes, hypertension, glaucoma, epilepsy, and a host of other medical conditions that Grenadians, Chalcoans, Petit Martinicans, Caribbean people, people in North America, England, Canada, all suffer from. And I think social justice requires that Grenadians should have access to medicinal marijuana. Mr. Cloudon, who is part of a newly formed movement advocating for the legalization of marijuana, said, in addition to the herb's medicinal value, it can bring economical benefits to the country. He referred to articles published on the advantages of the herb. MP Clement calls for decriminalization of marijuana. And he states in this article um, that the state of Colorado collected $300 million as revenue from the sale of this herb, cannabis, noting, la noting last year, meaning 2015, the state of Colorado collected $1.2 billion. According to Mr. Cloudon, the movement supports parliamentary representative Tobias Clement, and as the country gets ready for another election, the group will be campaigning for marijuana to be legalized. What we're going to do is this. We are going to start having registered in different parishes, in different villages, manned by certain persons who share the view that this is good for them and if we have elected representatives in parliament like mp clement then we can have legislation that would ensure the decriminalization on the one hand and the legalization for medicinal purposes on the other Mr. Clowden said with the use of marijuana legalized for medicinal purposes, it is his view that decriminalization for personal use should follow. He said this will avoid young people from being saddled with a criminal record for possession of marijuana, a conviction that can prevent them from traveling and attending universities in the future. Meanwhile, still in Grenada, two men are to appear in a magistrate's court on Wednesday to answer charges following the first drug bust in the island for 2017. 54-year-old Victor Charles, the captain of a speedboat, was apprehended over the weekend by the country's anti-drug squad. The boat and 80 pounds of compressed marijuana were also seized. Charles has been charged with possession, trafficking and importation of a controlled drug. Jamal Ross 
who turned himself into police in relation to the drug seizure, has also been charged with conspiracy to traffic and conspiracy to import a controlled drug. Meanwhile, police are investigating the discovery of marijuana found in a pair of slippers worn by an inmate of the Richmond Hill Prison. The discovery was made as the inmate attempted to re-enter the facility over the weekend. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, Belizeans warned of a visa hoax. The details of that story and more when we return. Stay with us. Your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for programming development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Game one going on right now of the men's championship between Dave and Drew and TJ and Chris. Chris back to serve. Over to Drew. Nice hand to Dave. Nice pokey for the point. Dave with a nice receive. Let's see what he can do. Smashes it cross. Canada has not lifted visa restrictions for Belizeans. That's the warning from the Belize Ministry of Foreign Affairs after an article online claimed that a waiver was in effect. In a statement on its official website, the ministry said the article on CBNTV.com was false. The article said that Belize was granted visa-free status for its nationals traveling on tourism and business grounds for a stay of up to 90 days. It added that Belize travelers contributed to 26% of Canada's tourism revenue with 0.1% immigration risks. Last year, Canada announced that Caribbean nationals would have to obtain an electronic travel authorization or an ETA before entering the country. And this took effect on March 15, 2016. The Canadian government said the move was due to its limited capacity to identify and screen foreign nationals who do not require a temporary resident visa to travel to Canada. CARICOM's Council of Ministers ended a two-day meeting in Guyana on Tuesday, finalizing the agenda for the upcoming intercessional meeting. And Secretary General Irwin Larocque says 2017 is a crucial year for the community's reform process. The council meeting examined a number of issues, including a proposed regional monitoring and evaluation system and CARICOM U.S. relations as a new U.S. president gets ready to take office. The council says it is appreciative of the Caribbean's good working relationship with past U.S. administrations and is looking forward to working with the incoming Donald Trump administration. It welcomed the recent passage of the U.S. Caribbean Strategic Engagement Act of 2016, which calls for a new long-term strategy to strengthen ties between the United States government and the Caribbean region. The meeting also received a presentation on the CARICOM results-based uh, management system as, as part of the entity's reform process. ...would indicate the areas which you believe the community should be focusing on in 2017. Undoubtedly, one of those areas will be the CARICOM single market and economy, the CSME. Last July, our heads of government had mandated that a review of the status of the CSME be completed for their consideration at the upcoming intercessional meeting. That review is being undertaken as well as a look at how we can recalibrate the CSME to make it more responsive to address issues of growth and competitiveness.
This is a crucial year for the reform process within our community as we arrive at the midpoint of the five-year strategic plan for the period 2015 to 2019. The Antigua and Barbuda government is looking to the incoming Donald Trump administration to end the Twin Island Nation's long-standing battle with the United States over online gaming. In delivering the traditional throne speech at the start of a new session of Parliament on Monday, Governor General Sir Rodney Williams said the administration is also seeking to enact legislation to help it deal with the matter. In 2005, the World Trade Organization, the WTO, ruled that the U.S. had violated international trade agreements by prohibiting operation of offshore internet gambling sites. Washington had enacted laws that prevented foreign-based operators from offering gambling and betting services to its citizens. Last July, Prime Minister Gaston Brown said his administration had dismissed the proposal that the U.S. had put on the table to settle the issue with Antigua, and Washington now owed the island in excess of 200 million U.S. dollars. Grenada has appointed a gaming commissioner to regulate the sector. Assistant Commissioner of Police Franklin Redhead has been named chairman of the commission. His appointment comes eight months after Parliament approved the Gaming Commission Bill in May last year. The bill restricts persons under the age of 18 from engaging in gaming activities. Economic and Planning Minister Oliver Joseph says there are some gaming sites and slot machines established around the island that allow underage teens to play unsupervised. He says the setting up of the commission is government's attempt at putting structures in place to control the sector. And the commission, when fully functional, will be responsible for receiving applications for gaming license, making recommendations to the minister regarding the approval, refusal, renewal and suspension of license, and maintaining records surrounding the application for granting of, suspension of, revocation of, and varying of license. Under the legislation, tax ranges from 30% of gross receipts, or 250 EC dollars, in respect of each gaming machine, while facilities for betting, excluding pool betting, will pay a tax of 30% of gross receipts. At least 20 people were killed and several others wounded when a bus carrying 64 passengers overturned after colliding with a truck on Sunday. The National Ambulance Center of Haiti said 11 of those killed died at the scene of the accident. It said most of the injured are in serious condition. The police said the cause of the accident remains unknown, but noted that it occurred in an area where work is being undertaken on bad roads. Survivors of the crash said that prior to the accident, the driver of the bus made several stops so that the mechanic could carry out repairs to the vehicle. The unidentified driver who survived the accident is reported to have fled the scene of what was the country's first major accident for the year. And ahead in Newsline Sport, confusion over one player's selection for two different teams in the regional Super 50. Stay with us. Sport is next. The John Connors Fife, the rhythm of the drum, the strum of the pan, the lilt of the voice from island to mainland, all pigments and tones, old and young, his and hers, all we are one. You, we, me. This is UE TV. Kilimanjaro is a trip. Uh, you know, it's been 10 years, 11 years since I've been there, and there were a lot of glaciers up there, and they have since um, melted. And quite a few are no longer in existence at the top of the mountain. Um, some say global warming, some say deforestation. Uh, that hot air from the desert floor has now come up the mountain. Um, but what an amazing climb. So incomplete, true, authentic, and wonderful. Sounds like a good thing. It is. It is. Uh, hooray, hooray. The first of May. Outdoor effing begins today. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us yeah. a, a few of the roots. Uh, you're, you're taking us right into the heart of things, the spirit of it, which is clearly what animates you in the book. But for a lot of people out there, there's a, like a 
pagan festival, spring festival, there's the worker day home. Confusion abounds after Ransford Beaton was selected as part of the Guyana Jaguars 14-member squad for the regional Super 50 tournament starting later this month in Antigua and Barbuda and also in Barbados. Beaton had been announced in the Leeward Islands Hurricanes 14-member squad for the 10-team tournament which opens on January 24, but the Jaguars selection panel had also included him. Local officials say neither the Leeward Islands Cricket Board nor the lanky fast bowler had informed them of any such move. West Indies leg spinner Devenger Bishu and retired veteran West Indies left-hander Shivnarayan Shandapal are part of the squad that comprises most of the players that have represented the Jaguars in the ongoing regional four-day tournament. The squad has been fortified with spin bowling all-rounder Stephen Jacobs, left-hander Asad Fudadin, fellow batsman Jonathan Fu and fast Last bowler Paul Wins earning call-ups after being overlooked for four-day duty. The Jaguars have been drawn in Group B, which will be contested in Barbados, where they will face the Jamaica Scorpions, combined campuses and colleges, Marooners and ICC Americas, along with home team Barbados Pride. Kieran Pollard failed to make an impact and Adelaide Strikers suffered their fourth loss of the Big Bash League season when Melbourne Stars edged to a two-wicket victory on Tuesday. Pollard conceded 17 runs and two wicketless overs as the Stars successfully chased 153 for victory in the second match of the tournament at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Discarded Australia fast bowler Ben Helfus notched the Stars over the finish line when he chipped a delivery from medium fast bowler Michael Nisser through square leg for a single with three deliveries remaining. Earlier, Pollard struck a couple of boundaries in 16 from 13 balls before Helfinus had him caught at mid-on in the penultimate over from a miscued pull. The strikers reached 152 for 8 from their allocation of 20 overs after they were put in to bat. The result meant that the Stars now have 6 points, the same number of points as Perth Scotches, but they are third in the standings due to a superior net run rate. And still in cricket, former West Indies cricketer Jimmy Adams began his new role as the WICB's director of cricket on Tuesday. In a release, the board said Adams will oversee and manage all cricket matters, including development of all teams, all coaching and cricket education and other technical programs. He will have the support of an operations department. The Jamaica thinks the timing of his appointment is right, with the WICB adding that he is very excited to be directly involved in Caribbean cricket once again. Outgoing director Richard Pryber says he is looking forward to Adams. That's the outgoing director Richard Pryber says he's looking forward to Adams bringing the breadth of his international experience and knowledge of cricket in the Caribbean to continue the work of rebuilding West Indies cricket. And we're switching sports. Guyana will be hoping to gain supremacy among four top Caribbean countries when it hosts the Caribbean Junior and Cadet Table Tennis Championships in April this year. Sean M. Barak of HGP TV Sport tells us more. The association will be hosting the Caribbean Junior and Cadet Table Tennis Championships. The tournament is scheduled for the 14th to the 19th of April 2017 on Easter weekend at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall, Homestretch Avenue, Georgetown, Guyana. The Cadet and Junior Championship engages players 18 years and under. The tournament will provide the opportunity for 32 of Guyana's top junior athletes an opportunity to compete against the region's best for the regional honors. The GTTA has already shortlisted the squad to be announced in view of starting the team's preparation. Last year, Guyana Junior team secured silver medal in a three-way tie between hosts and winners. The Dominican Republic, whom Guyana defeated by a 3-2 margin, and Trinidad and Tobago. The categories to be contested are boys singles, doubles and mixed doubles and girls single doubles and mixed doubles in the respective age groups. The competition will be used as the qualification event for the second Pan American Junior and Cadet Table Tennis Championships scheduled for USA in September of 2017 and to select the top four teams from the Caribbean who will join the top four from Central America and South America qualify for the Pan American event. 
with the qualification event being a compulsory, all top teams from the regions are slated. Over to Kingston, where General Manager of the Jamaica National Stadium, Major Desmond Brown, says reconstructing the venue with all the modern features will cost 350 million U.S. dollars. But he said Independence Park Limited, the operator of the stadium, has agreed to a phased renovation of the facility and is awaiting government clearance and funding for the work to start. Brown said the stadium is practically a rental-only venue, and this is one of the challenges to Independence Park raising revenue. He said they currently get 30% from the government to run the facility, and that's just the operating cost. All the capital costs would come from the government. The Jamaica National Stadium is part of the Independence Park complex, which also includes a swimming pool, indoor arena, and outdoor netball and basketball courts. Over to football now. Trinidad and Tobago women's national team goalkeeper, that's Kimika Forbes, has listed playing in South America and taking part in the Copa Libertadores Femina again as two of the major goals for her in the coming year. The 26-year-old made history by becoming the first Caribbean player to be part of a Copa Libertadores Femina side after Sportover of, of Paraguay defeated Estudiantes de Garcia of Venezuela in 3-2 in the final last month. She said in an interview on the CONCACAF website that she would love to start her own academy for goalkeepers in Trinidad and Tobago. Forbes, who played for University of Maine at Fort Kent in the United States, said playing in Paraguay was an eye-opening experience as she compared the different styles of play in the three countries that have greatly contributed to her development. And she added that it was a wonderful feeling to win the Copa title and she was still having a hard time digesting the achievement. Meanwhile, Tom St. the head coach of the men's team, the Soka Warriors, appealed for more time to shape the squad into a formidable force following the side's elimination from the CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifier. At a post-match press conference, after the Warriors went down four goals to three, which buried TNT's hopes of moving forward, St. Fee dismissed public criticism of his experience in football. He said it has nothing to do with the fact that he has never led teams in the World Cup, but about having insufficient time to prepare the side for the qualifiers. And that's the spot. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Coming up on 21st Century, in Chile, preserving a language and way of life. Es una canción antigua de 1928 que habla sobre el tema de la traición eh, con la guerra con los chilenos. And in Namibia, saving the black rhino. Overall, there are fewer than 5,000 wild black rhinos in existence. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Again, the major developments of this day, governments of the Eastern Caribbean urged to invest more in training early childhood educators. And in sport, confusion abounds after Ronsford Beaton was selected for both the Guyana Jaguars and the Leeward Islands Hurricanes in the regional Super 50 tournament. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to karnanews.com. We'll be back tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a very good night.